subscribe to our channel for latest video series on gain UGC net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So now we look at the second part of the same question similarly. Uh, from the second part also you can see that this is a periodic function which repeats after an interval of 2 seconds uh, it's, it's repeating its shape right so uh, we can express it we can use uh, find it for your uh, Laplace transform for this function also using the same formula that we have just seen so if I try to express uh, this second part also as a periodic function I can say that xt has value 1 for time interval 0 to 1 and value minus 1 for time intervals 1 to 2 and time period for this function is also going to be 2 now if you try to find out the Laplace transform of this function I can just use the same formula 1 by 1 minus e to the power minus ts now since it the fundamental time period is 2 you can just put value of capital T as 2 integration from 0 to 2 right because it is having values for all the time instances between 0 and 2 xt e to the power minus st dt right now i can just break these limits according to the time times since this function has different values for time intervals between 0 and 1 and 1 and 2 i can just break these limits and write this as 1 upon 1 minus e to the power minus 2s and from 0 to 1 my function is going to have value 1 so I can just put 1 as its value so it's going to be this simple integration for 1 to 2 functions having value minus 1 so this is going to be minus integration from 1 to 2 e to the power minus st dt okay now if you just perform this integration what are you going to have this is going to be 1 minus e to the power minus 2s integration for the first function is going to be e to the power minus st upon minus s with limits 0 to 1 minus integration for this function is going to be same e to the power minus st upon minus s with limits 1 to 2 now I am just putting the limit so what do I obtain I obtain e to the power minus s minus 1 upon minus s minus e to the power minus 2s minus e to the power s upon minus s now on simplifying on uh, just see the, the denominator for both of these functions is same so I can just add them so what do I get so I'm going to get 1 by 1 minus e to the power minus 2s and inside the bracket I'm going to have 1 minus e to the power minus s plus e to the power minus 2s minus e to the power minus s the denominator of s now this can be written as 1 minus 2 to the power minus s plus e to the power minus 2s and in the denominator you're going to have s into 1 minus e to the power minus 2s right now see if you just factorize the numerator you're going to get 1 minus e to the power minus s see uh, this is actually a square this is square of 1 minus e to the power minus s right so I can write this as minus minus whole square and using a square minus b square denominator can be written as 1 plus e to the power minus s into 1 minus e to the power minus s now one term is going to cancel out and Laplace transform for the given function is going to be 1 minus e to the power minus s upon s into 1 plus e to the power minus s right and uh, if you look at ROC it's going to be real part of s greater than 0 now see using the property using the definition of Laplace transform for periodic functions finding Laplace transform became very easy okay if you try to find out the Laplace transform of periodic functions using the basic definition you're not going to land anywhere because the function is going to repeat after every time interval right so you need to f you need to have a definition which is defined for that time interval only okay so that you perform the integration for one time interval and then you can find the Laplace transform easily right okay now look at uh, the next question so using unilateral Laplace transform you are required to find the solution of this given equation and they've also given you the initial condition see whenever you're using the unilateral Laplace transform then converting any integral differential equation in Laplace domain you require initial conditions because this is not when you uh, transform it in Laplace domain this is not going to be simply multiplication with s square okay you need initial conditions also so uh, right like this they have given the initial conditions right now in the question only so we can just perform uh, Laplace transformation 
So firstly, I'm going to perform Laplace transformation for this equation. So Laplace for y double dash t is going to be s square y s minus s y zero minus y dash zero. Laplace for y dash t is going to be okay. So this is uh, I guess okay. So this is going to be minus s y s. Plus y zero minus six y s and Laplace for e to the power t is going to be one by s plus one. See, whenever you see e to the power t, it is obvious that it is having u t. Okay, u t in unilateral Laplace transform is actually one. Right, we are, we are writing one as u t in unilateral Laplace transform. So whenever we have function e to the power t, it is obvious that there is u t in multiplication with it. So to perform Laplace transformation of e to the power t, it is going to be one upon s plus 1 right so you're going to have 1 by s minus 1 now if you just take y s common what are you going to obtain this is going to be s square minus 6 s minus 6 into y of s right if you just put value of y 0 it is 1 so this is going to be s y dash 0 is 0 so you can just neglect this term and this again you're going to have plus 1 okay so we have covered all the terms and here you're having 1 by s minus 1. Now if you just uh, take these terms to RHS, what are you going to obtain? 1 by s minus 1 plus s minus 1. Okay, now what do I do? I take LCM for these terms. So what are you going to obtain? This is going to be s square minus s minus 6 into y of s equal to uh, I'm taking the LCM as s minus 1. So this is going to be s into s minus 1 minus s minus 1 plus 1 upon s minus 1. I've taken the LCM as s minus 1. So this is going to be multiplication with both of them. Okay. Just if you just start solving this, what are you going to get? Let's see. This is going to be s square minus s minus s plus 1 plus 1 upon s minus 1. So in the numerator you are going to get s square minus 2s plus 2 upon s minus 1 and going to take this also this side so this is going to become this is going to be my expression for y of s okay now if I try to factorize the terms in the denominator okay I am going to express it as a partial fraction expansion for that I am going to factorize this first so what do I get this is s uh, minus 1 already I was having. Factors for this are going to be, uh, okay, let us do this completely. Right, so if you take s common, you are going to get s minus 1 into, if you take s common out of this, you are going to get s minus 3 into s plus 2. So now I want to express uh, y of s as a partial fraction expansion. So I can write y of s as simply c1 upon, so the factors was s minus 1, s plus 2 and s minus 3. So I can write it as c1 upon s minus 1 plus c2 upon s plus 2 plus c3 upon s minus 3. These were the three factors it had. So I express this like this. If you just uh, try to find out C1, C2, C3 using the similar uh, procedure we are following in every example. You find that C1 you are going to get at minus 1 by 6. C2 is going to be 2 by 3. And C3 is going to be 1 by 2. You can just verify them. Okay. And uh, so if you look at ROC for this system. Right. So ROC is uh, going to be, what is the ROC going to be? Real part of S greater than 3, right? Because, why? Because this is going to be a right-handed signal. Okay, anyways, in uh, unilateral Laplace transform, you're not defining ROC. All of these signals have to be right-handed, have to be causal signals only. So when you perform the inverse Laplace transformation, so then what you get? Minus 1 by 6 e to the power t plus 2 by 3 e to the power minus 2t plus 1 by 2 e to the power 3t for t greater than equal to 0 of course because we are using unilateral Laplace transformation okay so this is going to be the inverse Laplace transform for the given uh, equation okay we were given this equation and the solution is going to be yt equal to this signal right 
look at the next question now so they have given two differential equations now they are two simultaneous differential equations and they are asking you to find the solution using unilateral laplace transformations now finding solutions of two equation means you are required to find yt as well as xt they are just two equations in two variables y and x they are asking you to find the solution of the two simultaneous equations means they are asking you to find out expression for xt as well as yt right so we use the properties of uh, unilateral laplace transformations transform transform equations one by one then by using substitution method that is substituting uh, x of s or y of s in the second equation we are going to find expressions for y of s and x of s and perform uh, inverse laplace accordingly so we start with the first equation if you just transform into unilateral laplace transform what are you going to get this is going to be s of y s minus y of 0 plus y of s plus we are performing unilateral Laplace transform for the complete equation. So this is going to be s of x of s minus x of 0 plus x of s equal to this one represents u of t in unilateral. So the transform is going to be 1 by s. Okay, so if you just simplify this equation, you are going to get s plus 1 into y of s. Value for y of 0 is given as 1. So minus 1 plus s plus 1 into x of s value of x of 0 is given as 0 so you can just ignore it equal to 1 by s okay so i take this 1 in the rhs so what do i get s plus 1 into y of s plus s plus 1 into x of s is equal to s plus 1 upon s since all the terms are having s plus 1 and s is not equal to minus 1 i can just cancel it so what do i get I get y of s is equal to 1 by s minus x of s. Okay, so this is one equation that I have got from the first equation in Laplace domain. Now, if you look at the second equation, second equation uh, is given as y dash t minus y t minus 2 x t equal to 0. Performing unilateral Laplace transform for this equation, you get s y of s minus y of 0 minus y of s minus 2 x of s equal to 0 just simplifying this you're going to get s minus 1 into y of s value of y of 0 was 1 so this is minus 1 equal to 2 x of s so this is my second equation okay transformed in laplace domain now what do we do i am uh, trying to put the value of y of s from the first equation in the second equation okay so what am i going to obtain s minus 1 into y of s is this one so i am just putting this right substituting just substituting this value of 1 y of s from uh, equation 1 in equation 2 now this is a equation in uh, x of s only okay i can just solve this to get expression for x of s right so what do i do i'm performing multiplication so this is going to be s minus 1 upon s minus s minus 1 into x of s minus 1 equal to 2 x of s now I am taking terms of x of s uh, on one side. So what do I get? This is going to be s minus 1 minus s upon s. And this is going to be 2 plus s minus 1 into x of s. So what do I obtain? x of s is going to be minus 1 upon s into s plus 1 right if you just perform partial fractions you're going to get minus 1 upon s plus 1 upon s plus 1 you can just check it you're going to get as this as partial expansion uh, partial fraction expansion of x of s now perform inverse laplace transform so uh, inverse laplace of minus 1 by s is going to be minus 1 and for this is going to be e to the minus t and for t greater than or equal to 0 because we are performing unilateral Laplace transforms. Now we had value of y of s as 1 by s minus x of s. So I can just put this value of x of s here. We have obtained x of t completely successfully. Now y of s is going to be 1 by s plus 1 by s into s plus 1 from equation 1. Okay, I have just put value of equation uh, this x of s in equation 1. So if you just take the LCM for these two and add, what are you get, going to get y of s as? 
y of s is going to be s plus 2 upon s into s plus 1. Again following the same procedure, we find the partial fraction expansion for this. If you just solve this, you are going to get 2 by s plus minus 1 upon s plus 1 performing inverse Laplace transform for y of uh, t also. So I am going to get y of t as 2 minus e to the power minus t again for values of t greater than or equal to 0 only. Okay, so this is how you can solve two simultaneous equations in x and y using unilateral Laplace transform if initial values of the signals are given. Right, so look at the next question now. So now we look at the second part of the same question. See if you look at the second part uh, uh, very carefully, you will see that it is almost similar to the first part except the fact that uh, the complete function is multiplied with e to the power t and also with the function y of tau we are having inside the integral we are having this e to the power minus tau. Now see what effect is this e to the power minus tau going to have? We know that we if okay uh, let us look at it in detail now. So the given question is, I am just writing it again for convenience, y of t equal to e to the power t into 1 plus 0 to t integration e to the power minus tau y tau d tau, right. And we have to use unilateral Laplace transform. Now see, uh, I am separating it as two functions, suppose I am taking this as y1 t, this first function I am taking as y1 t and y2 t I suppose as e to the power t into integration 0 to t e to the power minus tau y tau d tau right now what am i saying is see this function is simply multiplication of this e to the power t with this integral okay so first i find the laplace of this integral then i can just make a shift of minus 1 in s domain corresponding to this multiplication with e to the power t now what am i saying is suppose laplace of y tau suppose Laplace of y tau was y of s right I am supposing that in the Laplace transformation for this function was y of s now when I multiplied it with e to the power minus tau I am just following it step by step okay when you multiply this function with e to the power minus tau what is going to happen this is going to create a shift of plus 1 in s domain right multiplication with e to the power minus tau creating a shift of plus 1 in s domain now I integrate this function. Now this is a separate function. Okay, you suppose that this is some separate function. Okay, what is going to happen? Whatever was the transform, okay, data is also here. Whatever was the transform of this function, whatever we had already, that is going to be divided by s simply. So transform for this is going to be y of s plus 1 upon s okay see this integration this integration just is just going to integration from 0 to t in unilateral laplace transform is just going to just going to make a division by s in s domain okay whatever was the function inside i suppose that laplace for y tau was y s then multiplication with e to the minus tau is going to create a shift of plus one integration from 0 to t is going to create a division by s now if you multiply this function by e to the power t now see this function has become a function in t right because we have integrated from 0 to t now what is going to happen this e to the power t is going to create a shift of minus 1 in all s which is going to give us y s upon s minus 1 right and what is going to be laplace for this function it is simply going to be 1 by s minus 1 now we have laplace transformation of both of them so i can just put them in the equation just taking Laplace on both the sides, it's going to be ys upon 1 by s minus 1. Okay, just putting the values 1 by s minus 1 and plus ys by s minus 1. Okay, now you can just take this uh, on LHS. So, you're going to obtain 1 minus 1 by s minus 1 equal to 1 by s minus 1. So, this is going to be s minus 2 upon s minus 1 is going to be s minus 1. So this is going to cancel and you are going to obtain y of s as 1 by s minus 2. 
So if you take the inverse Laplace transform for this function, what are you going to obtain? Phi of t is going to be equal to e to the power 2t for all values of t greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so this is uh, how you can just find inverse Laplace transform using unilateral Laplace transformation. Now one thing that you should have noted here, you should take in mind here is, even if there are several multiplication inside the integral integration operation multiplication by e to the power t, if you just follow the Laplace transformation step by step, okay, just start with the basic function and then whatever operations are happening keep on applying them one by one and performing uh, using properties of Laplace transformation perform operations on Laplace domain okay then it is going to be very easy if you try to find Laplace of this function directly it is going to be very cumbersome okay so just use properties of Laplace transformation one by one keep applying operations on the time domain and uh, accordingly just shift in Laplace domain okay that is going to be the easiest way of solving these kind of problems right now look at the next question so they've given a rc circuit and they're saying that the switching action takes place at t is equal to zero now see well, when switch was closed there no current would have been flowing in the circuit right no charging discharging of capacitor would have taken place now they're saying that before the switch was closed before switching action took place already this capacitor had a stored voltage of v naught okay so and they're asking you to find the capacitor voltage after t is greater than zero so basically they want you to find out the equation through which this capacitor discharge see this had a initial voltage of v naught when you're going to switch when you're going to close this switch this capacitor is actually going to act as a voltage source for this resistance what is the work of resistance is see this resistance is just going to dissipate energy this is going to help the current flow through this capacitor this capacitor is going to discharge and at infinite time when time is infinity voltage across this capacitor is going to become zero voltage is be going to become zero which means that this is going to become open circuit okay at infinite time this is going to become open circuit it's going to discharge completely right so we just have to find the equation through which is discharges for that purpose what am i doing is i'm just transforming this complete circuit into laplace domain because working in laplace domain is easy see if i uh, try to write out uh, write the current equation or voltage equation across the capacitor in time domain it's going to be very cumbersome right if i just transform the complete circuit in laplace domain working with equations working with simple algebraic equations is going to be very easy so i just transform the circuit in laplace domain we've already seen how we're going to transform all the circuit elements in laplace domain earlier so what am i doing is uh, okay so we saw that if we have a capacitor like this we have a capacitor like this if i want to transform it in uh, laplace domain and i'm uh, just uh, transforming it in voltage equation voltage equation means i'm going to place the elements in series so if i'm having a capacitor like this in which current flows like this and this is the voltage then if you want to transform it this is going to be the transformation this v naught v0 minus bias this is the initial stored voltage and uh, transformation with this is going to be 1 by sc so i'm applying the same transformation here so i'm going to obtain initial voltage was v naught it's given so this is value is going to be v naught by s this is going to be 1 by sc right now see current direction is uh, opposite so it's not matter transformation of r is going to be r only and this is how current flows in this circuit okay now if you just apply simple kvl i'm applying simple kvl to this uh, circuit so i can write the equation as i start applying kvl from here so i can write voltage across this resistance is going to be r into is plus voltage across this capacitor is going to be i of s upon sc and this is a voltage element and since i have encountered a minus sign i am going to write minus v naught by s equal to zero from here you can just find out the current which is going to be v naught by s into one upon 
R plus 1 by SC. Just take the LCM and uh, perform these operations. So you are going to get V0. LCM for this is going to be SC. So I am going to get multiplication with SC. And in numerator I am going to get S into SRC plus 1. So this can be cancelled out. Right. Now this is my current. Now if I try to find out voltage across the capacitor because in the question they have asked you to find they are asking you to find capacitor voltage. Now what is going to be the capacitor voltage for T greater than equal to 0. So to find capacitor voltage what do I need to do? I of S into 1 by SC. Right. If you just perform this you are going to get V0 by SRC plus 1 into C into 1 by SC. Right, so finally I've got V0 by S into SRC plus 1. Now see, keep in mind, keep this thing in mind, since they have given the limits as T greater than and equal to 0, we have to include this voltage which, which was initially on this capacitor. We have to include this V0 by S. See, uh, capacitor to calculate the capacitor voltage we have to take both of these elements in consideration okay we cannot only take this element we have taken in account this element but we have to consider the initial voltage also okay so to calculate capacitor voltage what do I need to do I need to take in account the initial voltage also I need to take in account this V0 by S also so what do I do I am going to add this add this element add this voltage Okay, since it is in uh, anti-series, this is going to have minus sign. Now, if you just take LCM and form this operation, what are you going to get? So, you are going to get V0. This uh, V0 I am taking is common. So, this is going to be SRC plus 1 minus 1. Just taking LCM, okay. Upon S into SRC plus 1. Right. So when you just simplify this, you are going to get V0 by S plus 1 by RC. Okay, now if you just take this, take it inverse Laplace for this function, what are you going to obtain? V0 into e to the power minus T by RC for T greater than equal to 0. Okay, so to calculate the complete capacitor voltage, you have to take the initial voltage also in account. Initial voltage V0 by S that was already on the capacitor for time uh, 0 okay right so this is your uh, this is going to be the expression now see this is the, if you just look at this if you just look at this expression if you put t is equal to 0 at t is equal to 0 capacitor voltage is going to be v0 which was the initial voltage on capacitor before the discharging action started if you put t is equal to infinity you will see that capacitor voltage is going to be 0 that is it discharges completely at infinite time infinite time means steady state at steady state what is going to happen this capacitor is going to discharge completely all its voltage is going to be dissipated in form of current flowing through the resistance okay so this is how discharging action of capacitor takes place right so it can be clearly seen using this equation fine now look at the last question of this series so again they have given a rc circuit and the saying that again the switching action is taking place now this circuit has two capacitors c1 and c2 of which c1 already had a, a initial volt v0 and c2 was uncharged capacitor okay also we have connected a resistance for current to flow so now what is going to happen this c1 was charged already to v0 that means this is going to act as a voltage source and current is going to flow therefore c2 is going to charge from this voltage okay the charging action is going to take place in C2, discharging action is going to take place in C1. R is just going to dissipate energy and current is going to pass through the resistance. So uh, what do I do? Firstly, I am just transforming this circuit into Laplace domain. Okay, after I transform it into Laplace domain, we are going to look at different parts that they have given. So since uh, this uh, switch is closed at T is equal to 0, so I can just draw it like this transform of R is going to be R only. This C2 was uncharged capacitor therefore no initial voltage. See they will say uh, as you to assume C1 is equal to C2 is equal to C. So 
transform for this is going to be 1 by SC and transform for C1 this is going we are going to have a voltage element V0 by S due to the initial voltage initial charge on this capacitor and again transformation of capacitor is going to be 1 by SC now this is going to be a circuit in place of IT you can write I of S okay so uh, now if you just try to find out the current I of T so that is I need to find the expression for I of S for that what do I do I just apply KVL simple KVL I am applying to this circuit if you just apply KVL what are you going to obtain you are going to obtain I am starting to apply KVL from here so what do you obtain you are going to obtain R into IS plus IS by CS plus I of S by C S. I'm just applying KVL here, okay? R into I S 1 by C S is all this. Then I have a voltage element. So this is going to be V0 by S equal to 0. Now if you just take I of S common, you're going to obtain R plus 2 by C S equal to V0 by S. So what is I of S going to be? This is going to be V0 by S into RCS plus 2 into CS. So this cancels out and you are going to obtain V0 by C into, I am just taking this, uh, taking RC common. So you are going to obtain R plus 2 by RC, just taking RC common. So this C is going to cancel out. Now this is the expression for I of S. If you take inverse Laplace transform, expression for I T is going to be V0 by R into E to the power minus 2T by RC for T greater than equal to 0. That means current in this circuit I of T is going to be V0 by R into e to the power minus 2t by rc for all time instances greater than or equal to 0 okay so this is what the expression for current is going to be now why is this current going to flow in this circuit because of the initial charge on c1 this current is going to flow okay now in the second part second part they are asking you to find the total energy dissipated by the resistor and then show that E is independent of R and equal to half of the initial energy stored in C1. Now if you try to find out initial energy stored in C1. Initial energy of capacitor C1. So we know that energy of capacitor is given by the formula half CV square. You might have studied about this in uh, network theory. So initial energy of capacitor C1 is going to be half C. And initial voltage on this capacitor was V0, so initial energy is going to be half CV0 square. Now let us see the about total energy dissipated by R and if it is independent of R, half of this energy or not, okay. So now how are we giving uh, total energy dissipated by resistor? Total energy, see energy dissipated by resistor is given by V into I or I square R. Now if they ask about total energy, since I is not, I is dependent on time so what happens when i try to find out total energy this is going to be integration from 0 to t i square t into r dt since i is a function of time i need to calculate for to calculate total energy i need to calculate the this integral from 0 to infinity in respect of time okay so if you just try to calculate this just putting the value of i that we uh, calculated in the previous part e to the power minus 2t by rc whole square r into dt right so you can just take this v naught square by r square into r outside the integral and this is going to be e to the power minus 2t by rc uh, okay so this is a square so this is going to be minus 4t by rc into dt now i am just performing this integral if you just Form this integration, you're going to obtain minus 40 by RC upon minus 4 by RC and keeping the limits from 0 to infinity. Okay, so you can just take this term also outside. So you're going to obtain minus V0 square RC by 4R and limits for this integral minus 40 by RC are going to be from 0 to infinity. So you can just cancel this minus V0 square C by 4. 
If you keep the upper limit, you're going to obtain 0, lower limit minus 1. So this is going to be, total energy is going to be 1 by 4 V naught square C. Now see, initial energy on the capacitor was half C V naught square. Now the total dissipated energy we have obtained as 1 by 4 C V naught square. Which means, which means that firstly this total energy is dissipated by the resistor is independent of R since we do not did not obtain any term of R in this expression of energy and secondly that this total energy is actually equal to half of the initial energy stored in C1 right so we have proved both of these points right okay see why did this happen why did we get this expression independent of R is because see initial energy of this capacitor C1 was half Cv0 square. Now where did half of it was dissipated by this resistor and half of it has been transferred to the second capacitor. Okay this is how this energy distribution takes place. If this resistance was not there then what would have happened this initial energy on this capacitor would have been distributed equally between these two capacitors. Resistor actually wastes energy dissipates energy okay because this is going to heat up when current passes through it heating of resistor is actually dissipation of energy because of presence of this resistance in the circuit when current passes through this resistance we are going to dissipate heat dissipate energy energy is going to be wasted if you just put two capacitors only charging discharging action is going to take place continuously because of this resistance this circuit is going to reach in steady state at some point of time the both of them are going to be in equilibrium okay uh, they'll have some amount of finite charges and they'll stay like that forever if this resistance is not there they're going to charge discharge continuously okay uh, that is the third part now they're saying that assume that resistance is zero that is this resistance is not present and again uh, the, these capacitances have same value so they're asking you to find the current and voltages that uh, occurs at immediately after switching action takes place okay so we, i'm going to draw this circuit again so uh, this first capacitance had an initial voltage this is going to be 1 by SC. This is going to be V0 by S. And the second capacitance also is going to have transformation as 1 by SC. This is the current flowing through the circuit I of S. Now if you just uh, apply KVL to this uh, circuit, what are you going to get? I of S into 2 by SC, since there are two capacitors, equal to V0 by S. So expression for I of S is going to be V naught C by 2. Now if you take uh, inverse Laplace for this, you are going to obtain half V naught C delta T. Right, inverse Laplace for this is going to be half V naught C delta T. Now what does this signify? What does this current expression signify? This signifies that current is going to flow in this circuit only for T is equal to 0. There is going to be a spike of current. Right, uh, only once this current is going to flow, there is not going to be a continuous flow of current in this circuit. Why did this happen? This happened because of absence of the resistance. Okay, resistance maintains flow of current. Now, what is this current going to do? This is going to make energies of these two capacitances equal, voltages across these two capacitance equal. After that, there is going to be no current flow. They are going to have equal voltages and stay in this forever. Okay, if you look at voltage across C1 at uh, after this current flow, what is going to be voltage across C1? It is going to be V0 by S minus V0. Okay, see a current, current was V0 C by 2, right? So what do I do? I just multiply this current with this capacitor. So this is going to be minus V0 by multiplying current by this uh, element value so what are you going to get v0 by 2s right so what is going to be the value of this uh, if you just take inverse laplace transform this okay in time domain so this is going to be v0 by 2 for t greater than or equal to 0 if you look at initial voltage on this initial voltage on this capacitor it was uh, sorry it was v0 
it was v not and after after we closed the circuit we switched off what happened the voltage suddenly reduced to in a spike in a moment reduced to v not by 2 now where did the other v not by 2 go now for that i am going to inspect the voltage at vc2 if you look at vc2 vc2 in s domain what are you going to obtain again current is going to be same v not c by 2 into sc Right again, if you take inverse Laplace, you're going to obtain V naught by two for t greater than or equal to zero. So V C two, V C two at zero plus is going to be V naught by two, and initial voltage on this capacitor was zero. So what can we conclude? What can we conclude from these two? As soon as the switch was closed, initial voltage on the first capacitor divided into two equal parts since value of capacitance was equal. Divided into two equal parts, this capacitor re remained with the voltage of V naught by two, and other V naught by two was given to the second capacitor. They got they got equally charged. This discharged by the same amount as this capacitor got charged. Now no current is going to flow. Look at the expression for current. It has an impulse function, which means that this current flowed only for one time instance, t is equal to zero. As soon as the, as soon as the switch was closed. After that, no current flow is going to take place. Okay, but in case when we had a resistance connected to this circuit, see the current flow took is going to take place till t is equal to infinity. Continuous charging and discharging is going to take place. Okay, this is what the role of resistance is. Energy is going to dissipate it. If you look at energies in the third part when we remove the resistance, see the this is this capacitor is going to have a value of voltage equal to this forever now. If you calculate the energy, they are going to have equal energies, which is if you sum them, which is going to be equal to the initial energy, initial energy of the capacitor. So there's no, there's going to be no wastage of energy, no energy dissipation because there's no resistance, no heating up is going to take place. Okay, so uh, you're going to learn all this in detail in network theory anyways. Uh, right now we had to focus on Laplace transformation of circuits. So this is going to be very helpful in network theory. So this is all, uh, all we've covered all the questions from SHOM series for chapter 3. Still if you have any doubts, any queries, anything you can just leave it in comments.